Hello, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to Ongakudi, the podcast where three friends come together and break down what's new in the Japanese music industry. For the episode for the week of August 14th, 2020, the belated spookiest day of the year. I'm your host, Ken, <laughs> and with me we have Luna. Hello, everyone. Ginky. And Gray. What's happening, dudes? Not too bad. We're, we're still going over a blowover from Kenji, if I'm remembering correctly. <laughs> Yes, we are, because that's been on my mind lately. Yeah, but with that, what have we been listening to, besides Sketchy, obviously? <laughs> um, so, not too much, although I finally got to listen to Udu's Orion Blue album in whole, and by golly, is that album good. I mean, you can hear the power and the emotion in her voice, and there's some of those songs that just had me in tears. It is absolutely gorgeous. And also was listening to some Kanaboon, some Horia Yui, Indie, and oh, a little Kodakumi in there, and some Banana Lemon again, and Arashi. And that's really it. So just a hodgepodge of music this week. What about you, Gray? Yeah, no, I've also been listening to Arashi. I've listened to their first album twice this week, and my God, those guys are fantastic from song one, album one. And if you if you if you have not checked it out, go on Apple Music, it's all there. Yeah, I listened to that twice this week. I've also been listening to Hiragana Kamiyato drop their latest album this past week, and I've been listening to that. And that, that one was surprisingly really good. Uh, the last song on the album, I believe, is amazing. I've listened to that on repeat. And they had two covers. They did the cover of the fourth One Piece opening, Kokoro no Chizu. And they actually do a really damn good cover of that song. And the other song, not nearly as strong of a cover, but even more noticeable, is its Flo's song, Go. And I'm like, eh, they, it does not quite work as well, but they, they, you know, they give it a shot. They do their best and I applaud the uh, attempt, so to speak. It's not terrible, but it's not that good either. But it's, it's a pretty solid album overall. It's only nine tracks, so it's, it's kind of a little bit on the small side, but I, I, I thoroughly have enjoyed it. Uh, I, I've listened to it twice a day alone. Also been listening to a little bit of LOL, a little bit of High Five, uh, just, you know, the, the usual suspects, uh, Ayumi, which was uh, done by I- Ivy. It's also a really good song. You know, just like the usual suspects in rotation. But yeah, what have you been listening to, Ken? I'm surprised you didn't ask or you didn't tell me about about the the other group you've been listening to since you just brought this up this morning. I, I've been listening oh, to yeah. Lucky Lucky Tapes because their, their new single, yes. Blue, just got released. And you were asking me yes. about 22 because you were saying that that is a fantastic EP, which it is. It's a very strong Oh, oh yeah. So. I, I also listened. I did listen to that. Sorry. I knew there was a group I was forgetting, and that's why I kept mumbling and stuttering because I was trying to remember the group. But yes, yes, I was listening... I listened to their their new single, Blue, which is really good, really good. My favorite song by them so far is still 22. Like, oh, my yeah, God, yeah. that song is just really good. <laughs> but, yeah, it's... But, you know, the whole EP was pretty good. It's only, like, what, three, four... No, it's, I think it's, like, five songs. Yeah, it's uh, about but, five songs. Uh, yeah, no, that's just a really good EP. And still listening to Lucky Tapes. Can't wait to talk about them again here in a in a few weeks like I'm, I'm pretty hyped about that if i i, I kind of already know this answer because i'm pretty sure they're going to be high on your top five where would you place them as of right now if you were to place them i'd have to relook at the list probably two or three though mm-hmm. ivy will be probably my number one yeah yeah probably because you were talking about them so much yeah so. god i love those guys but lucky tapes is pretty high on my list i'm not gonna lie like they like they're really really high I, like i'd have to relook at the full list see who all we're talking about but right now if we had to do it today they'd be number two yeah like blue it featuring koji koji like she is also another fa- fantastic vocalist that i would love to kind of do a music corner on in the future she has like, great pipes yeah great yeah pipes. probably probably not Mwah. this round but probably our next round of of artists she'll probably be on there because she's popped up in a bunch of our other 
Music Corner alums songs. She popped up in Sodane's tracks a handful of times. She teams up with him a lot, actually. So she goes around and kind of just teams up and collabs with whichever kind of artist around this usual style because she usually sticks with this this type of genre. So oh, I'd be totally down to listening, and checking out more of her work because she has she has really good vocals. I, yeah, I would be down she for that. is a she's a vocalist that is definitely going to be on the lookout for the future so besides lucky tapes i've been kind of going back to syrup again uh, speaking of music corner alums and going to keiju which is another r&b rapper type of artist i think you would really really like him luna so it, it's 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 kind of funny because well we'll get on this later because this week's music corner is actually was a little bit of a breakout from when I discovered him a couple weeks back, but it'll be interesting to kind of hear your guys' thoughts. I, I would love to hear that. Besides that, there's Free, which is done by Polka Dot Sing right there, a new digital single that was released, uh, I want to say, about a month ago. I finally caught up to go around and listen to it. It's all right. I mean, they, they had a very, very strong year, in my opinion, in the beginning, but this whole slump of who just everything that's been going on with the crisis and everything after trying to rebuild has been it it was all right let's just say that much there there wasn't much songs that i could kind of go back to besides that i was listening to ghost like girlfriends uh bake no gawa that was it was it was decent it's the newest thing that he done this year and it was was all right nothing too out of the ordinary uh, got Keiju, did Syrup, uh, Teo, Teo is also really good, his RNGP is amazing, like, there's a bunch of, like, a lot of future Music Corner artists that I would love to d- dive in eventually that uh, we'll possibly do, <laughs> but with that, you know, since we're kind of doing a hangover of Kanshi right now, unfortunately, we weren't able to do much on the site and news size-wise, so... I kind of wanted to bring this topic up, or I guess Luna, you wanted to bring this topic up about, you know, anime and how it kind of shaped the music industry overall because a big thing of anime is obviously the openings and ending theme songs. And how did you guys, I guess, how do you guys feel about, you know, discovering artists through that and kind of seeing like the popularity of an anime makes a popularity of an artist just shoot right up or even more so if a popular artist gets pit with a bad anime do you how do you feel about their their stock going down from there so i want to kind of hear your thoughts about that so why don't you kind of go ahead first luna sure so this kind of came up just because it also ties into oh we seal some anime singles on the charts like love live and idol master but it's not just that look at lisa who gurenge has been on the oricon for quite some time and even though lisa was you know has been popular before gurenge look at sword out online that was one of the breakouts for her fate stay night zero and i will say the first one I heard, and I'm just going to use Lisa as an example of how I got into her, would be Oath Sign from Fate Zero. And I had no idea who she, wa- who she was, but that was such an epic opening theme song. And hearing stuff like that really can make or break not only a show, but the artist. And I feel like she's had some great ones. And like you said, there's artists who've also had some very, very bad Oh, you know, song, or like the song was good, but the anime was bad. And I can tell you one I finished months ago called Gilgamesh, and Kodokumi did the opening theme song, Crazy for You. And the anime is horrible. It's awful. And, but, however, I still love that song, and I don't think it hurt her stock because it was on her Feel My Mind album. And that album sold very, very, very well. So I just feel like it didn't match the show, and the show also was not very good. But, you you know, you see there's a lot of artists as well who really, that's how people get into them and get to liking them, you know, especially if they only watch 
anime and they don't know any other way to find artists. And it's a great way for someone to experience them or for even people in Japan who might watch a lot of anime but aren't really into the music industry as well or don't know the newest artists and then they hear something and they're like, oh, that's really catchy. That's really good. I need to see who this is. And I feel like Boa was one for me with every heart. I didn't really, I knew who she was, but it didn't really hit me until Inuyasha when she did the ending theme. And there's a lot of artists like that who I feel like the songs have done really help make them or it could also help break them, you know, and that's a really big thing. And there's also artists who just do anime music and that's all they do. And unfortunately, it you know, if they don't do anything else, it, it doesn't always go over well, like Yuria and Shuffle. Hashimoto Miyuki, you know, there's a lot of those who might have popularity in Japan, just never hits to the U.S. But it's just such an interesting feature, you know, as a part of it. And with Lisa's new single coming out, and with Gurenge and Demon Slayer, I mean, Lisa's getting worldwide recognition. And then you think, you know, and it brings me back to look at all the other artists who no one probably knew of worldwide until they saw the anime and I feel like that makes a big difference and I can think of like even like Bleach that was a big breakout for a lot of artists like Scandal did Shoujo S and that was my first listen you know of Scandal yeah that's the first introduction for Scandal for me too and like a bunch of handful of artists for example Overworld Overworld has was a big part of bleach when they first started and orange range and things like that you probably wouldn't be a fan of them i wouldn't have been so engrossed with the japanese music industry like i have been if i wasn't hooked from d techno life so there there is a a commonality about that and i kind of want to poke your brains about this for just a little bit do you guys think that the song technically needs to match match the mood of what the anime needs to be or does it need to just be a a good song overall i think it depends it really if it's a really strong song i think it can get away with a lot of things yeah if the song is kind of okay or whatnot that then it will really depend on me the case in point I, I like to use is Miwa's ending for the third season of My Hero Academia, the first half of it. Not that there's anything wrong with that particular song. Update's a great song. But that is a very heavy, very depressing story arc and, and really like one of like the like gut more gut-wrenching arcs to watch. And so like you'll have like some serious crap going on on screen and then eight seconds later it cuts to this bubbly pop yeah, song. Kinda pops like, on, yeah. yeah it just ruins the mood and it and it makes me feel a little sour about update in a lot of ways again i do think that's a good song and i do enjoy that song but i i just feel like it, it does kind of mellow the mood so it really depends on the situation and and stuff like that i think i think it's a very much case-by-case basis but there's been times where it's like uh you like i'll watch an anime and the opening or ending theme doesn't really match what I'm watching show wise, but the the song is fantastic. The case in point I, I usually like to make is Parasite the Maxim, the ending theme being It's the Right Time by Daichi Miura, because it's just such a lovely, beautiful, and wonderful song. You wouldn't expect it to be at the end of a horror anime. And the, 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 the subject and subjects and themes that the song touches on do go hand in hand with the show, which does help a little bit, but still it's just this gorgeous, beautiful ballad at the end of this bloodbath. You're just like, I don't know about that, but you know, I, I absolutely fell in love with that song and and had I not watched Parasite the Maxim, I wouldn't have become the Daichi Miura fan that I am today. So, you know, it really goes in, in, in different ways and I, I want to pivot back around to what Luna was saying there for a little while, you know, because, you know, I think really the there's a symbiotic relationship that artists have with anime and vice versa, because, you know, there's people that check out shows that they may not have otherwise because they find out that there's there, there's an artist that they like that's doing the opening or ending theme. And that's usually the 
the positive of doing these sorts of things. And, you know, I've, I've, I said this on our AAA Artist Spotlight. If you haven't checked that episode out, by all means, go ahead. It's fantastic. But, you know, AAA did the opening for Common Rider Denno. And that thing was massive in Japan. And they were still very early in their career. And it, it really helped launch them off. And I just genuinely believe had somebody else done that opening besides them, they might would have had a different career. Because, I mean, they're, they're probably known for other songs, especially if you're a later fan or you're not into Kamen Rider. You wouldn't know them for the song, but it really put them out there in the ether and in the atmosphere, and like it just helped them grow. So, oh, no. No, that's yeah. completely 100% correct. I wouldn't know who AAA was as a whole if I didn't watch Den O. Yeah. And not not to shame AAA because I already knew who they were and they were they were like the Odyssey were. If you weren't paying attention from them from the beginning, it's kind of hard to get into them. <laughs> yeah, I could see that argument. Yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of just daunting just to look at their discography and kind of be like, oh well, I guess if I'm listening to a sh- or watching a show that I hear one of their songs close to fifty times, I am most definitely gonna be a checking out another piece of their work so and with that with you know gray's opinion on that so my i do agree with him completely it really depends it it can go either way for me because they're ones that they're tracks that i'll hear for a song i'm like oh my god that fits it perfectly with the show and then they're ones like why in the hell did they put that as a theme song because this does not match and despite something not matching, if the song is really good, I will freaking love it no matter what. And I've gone that way with several anime that I've absolutely loved the theme song despite it not matching. And also ones that even if they did match, I might not have liked it. It might not have been my taste. So I would say for me, it depends on the song, but I can also understand the relation to the show And like, you know, using Update like you did for an example, I love Update as a song, but it does not fit that at all. It just, it does ruin the mood and it does take you out of the moment. However, I, since I heard the song before I watched the show, for me, I could easily take it out of there. But it did irk me that they put that as the ending because I'm like, they shouldn't have done that. It didn't fit, you know, and despite that, you know, there's still, I, I love me one. I have a soft spot. But going on from there, you know, like Full Metal Alchemist, the original had so many great songs that fit with it. That's like one of the ones that got me into so many, so many artists as it had a ton. And Lark was one of them. That was a big one for me because I had no exposure to Lark and Seal before that. And that kind of got me into a whole separate genre that I've never experienced before. And and stuff like that, you know, and th- all those songs fit with Full Metal so well. And I feel like a lot of it relies on a composer like Rase Fan, Wolf's Rain. They had Sakamoto Maya and either Yoko Kano, Yuki Kajida, any of those composers. Like, they're so good at mixing the artists with the music that it's just flawless. And that's something that just makes me love it and flow as one. And then there's some you can just pull right out, pull the song right out of it, and you still love it. Or you don't, you don't, how do you say, you don't match it with that particular anime. You can just listen to it as a whole. So, but I will say a lot of them, like we were talking about, make and break them. And you get new artists who come in and do theme songs. And it can make their career shoot up. It can get people to recognize them. Or they can drop off the face of the earth and you never hear from them again. And there's one I can think of in particularly I haven't heard from in a while. And that was Kylie. And she did a song ending theme for Gundam Unicorn. And I want to say she did one other anime. And I have not heard anything from her in years. And I absolutely love the track for Unicorn Everlasting was fantastic. And I liked her music. However, that was one that just kind of... It just fell kind of flat, I'm guessing. But Imer also did a song for Gundam Unicorn, and that was like, boom. So I feel like maybe it, dep- it depends on some of the moods and maybe what some people like and don't like. But 
it's just one of those things that's really hit or miss for some people and it really can make or break an artist and it can give them a good push if it does make them and that's something early they do I mean, it can rise them to the charts, and Lisa's a great example of that. Imer, um, a lot of, like a lot of the seiyus you see, who done you know done music like I have a soft spot for seiyus like Mizuki Nana. If you look at her, she's done so many fantastic theme songs, and then she's also a voice actress. So, I think a lot of that makes a big deal. I'm kind of curious to hear some of your thoughts on. Ken, on ones that for you, does it make, you know, how do you think it makes it or breaks an artist? No, I mean, I, I totally agree with what you guys were saying earlier. It's just like th there are certain songs that just don't match, but over time, it kind of just, it, it kind of just matches the theme of what it's going on. Like one, one of the bigger things is I'm, I'm watching Major Second right now, which is a baseball anime and Ide Reo did a song called answer for it and the song makes no freaking sense until the second of the till the last episode of the first of the first part of the season and it only made sense now because it's a love song and it made no freaking sense to it until you watch the last couple episodes <laughs> because it, it makes no sense to the you're you're putting this this hype up for this romance that's going to happen in the anime that doesn't come to fruition until the last two episodes, and then you're already gonna change the song. So there was there were certain things like that, and there are songs that kind of just turn the anime to crazy levels. One of the animes that I think of is Death Note because you listen to Maximum the Hormone, that song it just brings the absurdity to what that anime ended up becoming to to eleven. Granted, there might be people that don't like that song, but there are just what it ended up coming just ends up wrapping it a little bit more but there there's a couple things i do want to think of or i want to play a little game here if if you were to say an anime or or an artist do you immediately associate to an anime or an artist like for example if you say inuyasha do you think of boa immediately or if you think of boa do you think of inuyasha is there artists that do that or songs or series that do that for you guys if you say sakamoto maya the first thing i probably think of is escaflone and mm. then wolf's reign and then probably oof, there's a couple other ones following that the sorry my brain subasa but there are some that yes and if i think of inuyasha i think it do is infinity if you want me to be honest. Mm -hmm. Now, if, if you say Boa, though, I'm I'm actually not going to think of that. I'm probably going to go with Valentine or Alanis Princess, or I would be like K-pop or J-pop. So I think it depends on the artist and what they specify. Like Mizuki Nana, I'd be, I would think of, I would probably think of a couple of her albums first. However, then I would be like, do you mean as a voice actress or do you mean as a vocalist? Because with some, it can go either way. And, or like if you would say Fullmet Alchemist, first thing I would think of is Lark and Seal. Then I'd probably think of Kitari Nana. And same if I would hear like them today, like someone says Lark and Seal, I probably would think of Fullmet Alchemist Ready, Steady, Go, because that's all. Adult Swim played because they didn't have the right to the porno graffiti one, Melissa. They couldn't, they never played it. So for me, yeah, there's certain ones I would incorporate with a certain artist. Like if you say Haruhi, first thing I'm going to think of is Hira no Aya. Now, if you say Hira no Aya, first thing I'm going to think of is Monstar. Because <laughs> that's my favorite. But, or Neophilia. However, I, I totally see your point because there's certain artists you associate with certain things. If you say Shimo Kawami Kuni, I'm going to think of Full Metal Panic. And I'm going to think of Minami Kaze from the second season. So, I, I don't know. I'm kind of curious what you guys think. What are ones that make you gravitate if you hear a certain artist or hear a certain show? Do you think of something specific? 
Well, I, I know for me personally, uh, like if, if anytime I think of Inuyasha or anything like that, like I think of V6 because I've always felt like that changed the world opening, the very first one. I felt like that was just such a defining thing for the show. I felt like it fitted the theme of the show really well and gave you that sense of adventure and awe and wonder. And, you know, anytime like we talk about Yui or anything like that, I think about Full Metal Malcolm's Brotherhood. And, you know, just... Bleach. I, see, I don't know her from Bleach. I didn't watch that show. So, like, wouldn't know. She did two theme songs from that. <laughs> News to me. I do know her from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Because, I mean, that, 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 that is my favorite anime of all time. And that, that anime is just, oh, so good. It, it depends on the artists. There are some artists that... It, it's weird because... Like, Parasite the Maxim is the anime that introduced me to Daichi Miura. But when I think of Daichi Miura, I don't, I actually don't associate him with Parasite. I associate yeah, him with Yeah, it's the same with Kamen Rider. Yeah, yeah. no, it, that's totally understandable because that was his breakout song because it was extremely freaking popular to hear it out in public. And like I said, it was the first Tokusatsu song to be performed at the Koaku, so... <laughs> yeah, well, and... So, sometimes, like, especially, like, Kamen Rider openings, like, they kind of, like, try to work in, like, themes and ideas and stuff from the show, and excites, like, one of the first few ones where it just felt like they just picked the song to be the theme. Oh, yeah. Because no. it doesn't they, have anything to do with what the they, show's about. <laughs> they probably just relied on Daichi to do the song. Yeah. So... You, you know, it, it's, it's a case-by-case basis, and... Uh, see, I'm trying to think if there's like any more artists that I all of a sudden I'm like, ooh, that anime or, or something like that. Like, those what are about I can think of. Blue Ink Count? Well, I can associate them with a couple of anime because uh, the first anime that I heard a song by them and this and what introduced me to them was Mobile Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans because they did the first ending, Survivor. Which is a great song. Oh my god, I love that song. And, and and to this day, I think that's my favorite song that they do. But, you know, I wasn't crazy about Polaris being the opening of My Hero, but going back and watching it with my fiancé, I gotta say that song's grown on me quite a lot. I actually woke up one day with it stuck in my head, so that's that's a good sign, I guess. Yeah. It, it's grown on me. I still am... I'm not crazy about it, but it it's it's pretty good. And I will say Polaris does fit the mood for the first half of the season. Yeah. But I don't want to say too much. I don't want to spoil anything for, for uh, my hero. But, you know, it, it just depends. Spy Air has it, been one, like one of those groups where it's like, I you know, they did like the third opening to Mobile Suit Gundam, Iron Blade Orphans, and I love that song to death. And I've gone and I've listened to more of their music and specifically like the album that rage of dust was on i that was the only song i wound up liking i didn't like the rest of the album at all but that song is oh my god it sounds good the one of the other really interesting cases is man with a mission because they've done so many anime like i love raise your flag by uh that they did which was the first opening for mobile suit gundam iron-blooded orphans but I think this. I think the anime I associate them with is Log Horizon because Log Horizon has one opening and it's database and it's a fifty-two episode series and they just announced season three. Uh, yeah, and I was. I'll, I'll be. I was, and I'll, go ahead. I was just gonna butt in and just say I don't associate them with anime. To be perfectly honest, because I, I I was like, what songs of anime have they did? But you're just naming anime that I just don't watch or I wasn't watching during that time. So I I didn't watch Log Horizon or anything. Yeah, they've they've done the first opening to Iron Blooded Orphans. They did Database for Log Horizon. They they did Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah, I think the second didn't. opening. <laughs> They oh, they've done done several. Several. They, they, they've done several, yeah. They but. did something else, too. What was the one that I I really liked by them? And it was an opening to an anime, and I can't remember. I don't remember. Not I, I thought it was something with Bleach. I yeah, thought that, it was something with Bleach. No. But I know I'm wrong, because it's not Bleach, because it hasn't been on for a while. 
Yeah, Man with a Mission's pretty current. And it was one that I really liked when we heard, and it was on the Her something Horizon album. Sorry, it's been a while. Yeah, honestly, for me, like if 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 you were if you guys were to say it, yeah, for me, it's gonna be Dream Take My Me Will. Under. <laughs> Oh Take my god, under. Dream by Will is so good. Take Me Under that was the one I was song. thinking of. That is a good song. I feel like I, I mean, honestly, that's the anime. song that I immediately think of. I mean, I like Fukai Mori and Duan's Infinity. A lot of people mm-hmm. would probably think of Duan Infinity and Boa, for that matter, for for Inuyasha. But no, My Will is oh, the that is song such... and the ending for me. Like I said, I, I went to Odaiba just to ride that stupid Ferris wheel and do the stupid shot like how it was in Inuyasha. I because mean, me, I, me, me and Luna <laughs> rode that Rode that Ferris wheel too <laughs> together. I should have played My Will on there because I love that song and I bought that single just for that song and I also have the album with it on it too. Oh, that, that song is so good. And, and that ending, how uh, I mean, to be fair, we, like Inuyasha's got so many openings and endings. We could be here all day just talking about Inuyasha. Yeah, we can talk about Inuyasha <laughs> just in general. <laughs> hey, mm-hmm. I, I would be down for that because I've been <laughs> craving to rewatch it. And now that I they're have really to. hyping the sequel series, I'm. Oh, like, yeah. The, they announced like, oh, the, 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 the CUs for the sequels, and one of them is is really really a really good seiyu and she's she's part of bang dream so i'm pretty sure she ain't gonna come out for bang dream stuff for a while because of this <laughs> but yeah it's yeah. it's it looks like to be an all-star cast as of right now oh well, and see i feel bad because i never finished inuyasha <laughs> i so i went I online watched... and read how it ended because i just because i wanted to watch final act but i didn't watch the final so act yet since i watched like the original series the original I think yeah I, I think I've only seen up through season six. I don't even think I've seen season oh, seven. Oh, jeez. So I watched all 167 episodes of the original, and I remember at the ending, I got really upset. It was 1130 at night, and I screamed, that's how you're going to F and end the show. <laughs> so I woke, my my mom overheard me, and I dropped the full F-bomb. And I was in, I think I was in high school at the time, and she's like, what are you doing up at 1130 at night on a school night? And it, I think it was on Adult Swim, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, it was on Adult I was Swim. Pissed, and I was so mad at how it ended. And I tried to explain to her. She's like, "Nope, go to bed." And <laughs> I never see, forgot that. I was so upset. See, you know, because of where I live, I don't, I don't think of Adult Swim as it being late because Inuyasha was always eight thirty for us. Wow. Oh, mine. It, it was, was like eleven, eleven thirty. It yes. was well. It was midnight. To, yeah, midnight for me. Yeah, it would, so, yeah, our our Adult Swim block here would start from either eight or nine, just depending on if there was daylight savings. Because we we're based all of our shows, the major cable networks were based off of like California. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, like all the timing wise, all, all of our stuff is is according to that. I mean, there are cer- certain shows or like networks that did accumulate to Hawaii time, but for the most part, some of the bigger ones went with california time so i didn't yeah. i didn't have to say what was fun is if i did end up missing the episode if i just stay up three hours later i get to rewatch you it get to, yep i did uh, that because there were a couple times i did that and another one i want to call out for the amazing music is gundam seed is if it weren't for that show that got me into tm revolution well actually i take that back rainy kenshin got me into tm revolution oh, kenshin. however yeah oh, i love kenshin My and God, however kenshin. Gundam Seed got me into Tamaki Nami, and that was someone who, that was her first single, was Believe from Gundam Seed. And that made her, because she ended up doing Believe and Realize for Gundam Seed, and then she ended up doing Reason for Destiny. And to me, like, she had a huge success with Sony, and it was part of it was because of Gundam Seed, and Believe was a huge successful single. They had a remix single later for that and Realize. And... I want to say, if it weren't for that anime, I and Pop Japan TV, I never would have heard of her, and I freaking love her for that. And the music was so good. And Seesaw was also one of the ones that it was oh, Dot Seesaw. Hack. Yeah, like if if I Dot see, Hack if I think of Dot Hack, it's immediately Seesaw because they did a majority of their songs. Yep, they did. What's it? They no, did. Like, was did they do like that entire series? Because I think they did like yep, they did all the signs. openings, and I think like. They did One sign the, the OVAs, Legend of the, the Twilight. games, and yeah. and Twilight, and I think the the Chibi anime one also. So, and I think they did Jiu 
Uh, they were heavily involved with that series. Like, very heavily mm-hmm. involved with that series. Oh, they were. Yeah, yeah so that like, was, like, a big thing for me. If we're talking about game series-wise, then yeah, that, that that's the <laughs> that's their, their thing. I immediately think of uh, Seesaw. Yep. But. Yep, and that was, you know, there were some, like, I still love the music to Gundam Seed, and Fiction Junction, Yuka, was the main one for that, and I never would have realized that Kajuta Yuki, that was one of her side projects, was Fiction Junction, and she did different ones based off Vocalist. That was a huge one for me, and Nakashima Mika did find a way for the one of the ending themes. Yeah. And I, I mean, there are just so many artists that you don't realize do all these fantastic songs and tracks and you know and you hear them in a show and there's some i'll go out of my way to watch a show for a, a song to be honest so so gray i gotta ask you this if if i were to name or say one piece what is the the theme song or the the song that comes to my artist comes to my one i say one piece so i know i'm going to catch a lot of flack for this because a lot of people associate the guy that did the, the original opening yeah with yeah that where franchise. we are for, yeah, yeah yeah and i can never remember that dude's name which, which goes to show you that's not going to be my answer to the question because <laughs> i do think we are is a, a great great song i think it's, it catches the spirit of the anime and it's one of the few anime openings that was actually wrote for the show and we go as a response song to that just you know they're both really really fantastic songs but the song that i think of is folder fives believe because that that just winds up being my favorite opening theme song for one piece but that that too i think captures the spirit and heart of the series because that you know like one of the things that Luffy is is just this self confident. I mean, he's cocky to a fault almost, but you know, he believes in himself. He believes in what he can achieve and what he can do. And for a person like me who has really struggled with the bulk of their life being being able to believe in themselves, having self confidence, and you know, believing that you can achieve and strive for your dreams. These are these are things I have struggled with my whole life that believe really just resonated with me that like like let's just go you know the the future's out there you can grasp it you know believe and you will succeed and you know that to me is the song i think that really encapsulates one piece to to a t and it is just Mm. really like my absolute favorite now i was reminded of kokoro no chizu Earlier today, because Hiragana Kamiyato actually did a cover for it on mm. um, HRGN, which I did not know uh, at all. And I was standing in Walmart earlier today, and it came on. I'm like, is this Kokoro no Chizu? <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just blown away. And and then they say one piece in the song. I was like, yes, this is Kokoro no Chizu. And so, and they misspelled it in the Apple store. So that, that was another thing that kind of threw me off. It was Kokoro no Tizu. I'm like, what's Tizu? I don't know what that <laughs> is. Uh, probably because they t- took it from the Katakana. Oh, more than likely. But that's another song that is heavily associated with One Piece and yeah. usually is winds up on a lot of lists of like best openings, period, for One Piece. Mm. And it is pretty good. It's pretty high on my list, too. Like, so... This is to go to the both of you because I'm not too sure how how familiar you guys are with the series. But if I were to say Naruto, which there's only one correct answer, I'm gonna beat you both if you don't say the right answer. Well, <laughs> do you want the Japanese name of the song that I can never just, remember, or do you want just the give English? me give me the band? Don't give me the song. Asian well, Kung Fu Generation. <laughs> well, I also love Asian Kung Fu Generation. I forgot they did songs for that. No, I did because I was not a Naruto fan. I never was. So when yeah, I think of Asian I, Kung, I, Kung Fu I, Generation, I knew it was one of you guys that I wasn't really Bleach. a Naruto fan. I'm trying to remember which one it was. Is me. <laughs> so when I think of Asian Kung Fu Generation, I think of Bleach and After Dark. But I also think of Full of an Alchemist and yeah. Rewrite. Yeah, yeah. You oh, got, so you got, you yeah. got a couple of but couple of a couple of things I, that they did. They also did. Uh, they did Far and Beyond as the second opening for Naruto. Yeah, oh my they God. did Erase. Erase is probably one of their stronger ones. Riri is probably, because they read Riri. They, they I re- actually love Riri. They re- did that song for it. Yeah. I didn't I, know they did it for Erase, but I'm familiar with the Naruto songs because I love their, yeah. uh, what album is that? It has like every, like every one of my favorite songs on it. Yeah. Sp- speaking of 
Naruto and and things like that. Like the other band that I think of when I think of Naruto, because there's two, there's two that comes to mind. Flow specifically is Asian Kung Fu Generation and Flow being the other one. And yeah, that's mm, what I've been saying. That, I've been saying Flow. I would say there's three to be perfectly honest, because Flow Flow was in in. The early day of Naruto, but what happened after that kind of boon took over for that. They did so, like three songs, yeah. well, I think. I never got into Shippuden, so like yeah, yeah, I yeah, only yeah. watched base Naruto, and I read I think like the first fifty some odd volumes of the manga. So yeah. I can talk about things that happen in Shippuden, but I can't talk about. You can't talk about the war or anything like that. The yeah, or, or, and, or and specifically, I couldn't talk too much about the openings and endings of. Shippuden. I did love yeah. the I did love the first opening. That that song like, is uh, Let's say this much. If you see any clip of someone doing the Naruto run, th- that the song that you most likely listen to is the song from Kanaboon. That Ore Watashi I do Yeah, that's I never got that far. Yeah, that's kind of bad. Yeah. It's in Shippuden. And it's probably their most famous song that they're most known yeah. for from Naruto. And Ikimonogakari is the other one I think of because uh, of Bluebird yeah. and Hotoro no yeah, Hikari. Yeah, Bluebird. You got Bluebird. Bluebird was the song that put everyone on the map for them. And yeah. for any inspiring vocalist to become that strong a vocalist, they sung that song. There's uh, Yokoyama Yui, who is the so-called general manager of AKB48, auditioned with that song, and that's how good that song is for inspiring artists to become like them. So there, yeah. there's ripples of that in the industry. Obviously, if I say Digimon, you're gonna think of Butterfly and Butterfly. Kojiwara. Well, well. To be fair, I know nothing of Digimon, to, so that's to be great. Fair, I'm, I'm more familiar with the Saban. Yeah, yeah, the Saban one. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, like... you, you know it wasn't until they they did try, I was able to really start listening to Butterfly and stuff like that. Yeah, so... like for for me because I well I've watched the I watched the English and then I watched the Japanese because I watched Dark Masters in Japanese like I've told you guys yeah and that's when I jealous. was I was familiarized with Koji Wada's work with Butterfly and then the Digivolution song yeah that is freaking amazing so I, I I I will I will say even though I was not able to grow up with it once you go back and you hear Butterfly you get mildly pissed <laughs> about the uh, the song we did get. Uh, where they just repeat Digimon ad nauseum. <laughs> yeah. But, so th- th- there's a yeah. couple things. Like, that I wanted to test the big three, and then, obviously, if I were to say Gundam as a series overhaul, what what artists would bring it out for you? Two Mix is who I usually think about, because Two Mix, because the biggest gun, especially they did in America, wing, though. is Gundam Wing. And Two Mix did... All the openings and endings of Gundam Wing. I, I love just communication. I love rhythm emotion. Yeah. I I really wish they would put just love on Apple Music Store so I can download it because that ending was fantastic. And that that's who I think of. But I do know with Gundam, it, it's going to be solely dependent on the series that got you into yep. Gundam. That's what I was going to say. It yeah, really depends say, on the first Gundam you saw and that you loved the most. I mean, like yeah. for me, because I was exposed to Wing first, but I loved G Gundam. G Gundam is G good. good. G Gundam is good. I don't. I, re- I, I fell in love with G Gundam more than I, than I. That tells you this much. I haven't watched a Gundam series ever since. There's been series oh, that I, I tried to go back in. I tried Builders and stuff like that because it is it dealing with that whole community. But it, yeah, I just, I, I just never hooked me. My, another friend of mine who is uh, into the Gumpla groups, he is. Well, he wouldn't tell me he likes certain songs, but he wouldn't be able to tell me an artist. Yeah, well, and like uh, I love the first opening for 0083 Stardust Memory, which is the winner by Mika Mutsubara. And but you know it's it's, it's really obscure. I, I'm willing to bet there's a lot of people in the Gundam community who haven't watched 0083 Stardust. So Memory. I think most hardcore hardcore fans have probably watched it. Now I have not yet because I'm finally diving into the old stuff. But so, oh, so I will good. say Gundam Seed is what really got me into Gundam. And when I was younger, I watched Gundam Wing, but I couldn't get into it. Same with G, Gu- G Gundam I actually got into, but the theme songs didn't wow me. 
but I didn't get into wings, so I didn't get the whole appeal at first. So Seed was the first one that got me to freaking love Gundam. And I know Kyo is going to freaking chew me out for this because he hates Seed. Me and him go round and round on this. But I will say like TM Revolution, because of that opening theme song for Gundam Seed and Seed Destiny, they are so epic, like Invoke and Ignite are super epic theme songs when you hear them. I mean... First thing I think of is in the original Gundam, I think of the strike just flying out of there and of the ship, of the Archangel. And then in Destiny, I think of the, hmm, what does Shin pilot? Because I did, Destiny was not good. <laughs> but when Shin, you know, like comes out, his Gundam morphs, like it, it just morphs and it's like so iconic and it fits. And with Tamaki Nami, her theme songs, I think of her, I think of... I actually think of Fiction Junction Yuka and their ballads when people start dying and they play that as insert songs. That's the, that is so memorable to me. And Find the Way for Nakashima Mika, that's one of the songs they use since when it gets near the end of the series and the final arc and a lot of people start dying. It's, there are certain epic moments that for Gundam for me, those are the songs that stuck with me because it fit exactly with every part of the show and its meaning. So, like, but it, like, like Grace said, it goes with the show. It goes with the show. And, like, you know, for me, you guys, you, you mentioned this earlier with Lark. I don't equip them to... to Full metal. To full metal. I equip them to double O. They so. did Gundam double zero, didn't they? Yeah, they did Daybreak, Daybreak Bell. So. I totally forgot about that. It's been years since I watched Double Zero. I think of... Mm, oh my god. It's been so long since I watched Double Zero. There was a super epic one in that. And I loved Double Zero, actually. A I, lot of people hated it. I, I, I've had a hard time getting... I, like it, It's one of those it's, things as a huge Gundam fan. I, I don't know if it's for me or not. Like I, I've watched like the first two or three episodes. It's out I'm there. I'm not feeling it. It has really good music, though, because I actually bought it. Ash Like Snow was the big one for me, and Friends by Stephanie. But mm. me, for Stephanie, it was because I loved her, and I didn't know she did Double Zero, and I actually started watching it because of that song. So yeah. if you go back and you actually watch like the original 79 Gundam, it's really interesting because they did the whole... We write the, the, because it's 1979, like they're doing like, you know, it kind of reminds me of like the first Common Rider opening in a lot of ways. This is very old style song where, you know, they talk about Aruto and how he's going to save the day. And it's, it's kind of catchy, I guess, but you know, it, it doesn't really stick with you in a meaningful or interesting manner. And it's, and yeah. it's really interesting how as the anime industry is is the word i'm looking for has evolved over time because they because they did do like you know those before they started licensing songs they would do like original anime openings where you, you know they would just write about the show and they would sing about it and either you would love it or hate it i mean sir some do still like there's yeah. there's a there is a group that specifically just does anime songs that yeah. talks about the show and that didn't really straight too far there's still that happening but yeah you are right when the music industry and the anime industry grew significantly to go international they decided to go out and do work hand in hand and work on these productions to just have songs that might not be vaguely reminiscent to the show but have the same quote-unquote themes mm -hmm. so yeah yeah and like with the older ones i actually want to bring up slayers because if you look at the older anime and slayers is the perfect example they used a lot of the actual voice you know the voice actresses doing the theme songs like haya shibata megumi did lena inverse and she did the opening ending theme songs pretty much and she teamed up with one of the other um, voice actresses mm. to do the opening one, which is, which I always get stuck in my head. Yeah, I mean, it, it comes back to like, well, like case in point, Sailor Moon. If you watch Sailor Moon, what's the opening theme song about? It's about how Sailor Moon's going to kick everyone's ass. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. And Slayers is about how they're going to defeat all the monsters because they say that, you know, in the beginning, they have their whole little speech about defeating the monsters. Yeah, and so. that's what Slayers is, you know? So I feel like looking at that and look at Amagami-sama, that's another one where a lot of the the three main vo vocalists actually did the opening theme songs, so. 
So, yeah, I mean, as the industry also evolves, we kind of get into that thread of having the CEUs actually sing the song that they're a part of, and that kind of grows with the the trend. We got, you, you'll see this a lot with certain other, like, series. I, I know Isekai series do these, where they cheap out on getting an actual artist, and they just use the CEUs that are in the series to do the songs. So it's uh, something that I've been kind of noticing as of late. And you got premises or animes that are basically about being in the music industry, like Love Live and Idol Master and Bang Dream for that master for that matter. And when the when the anime for D Four DJ comes out, there's all their songs are probably going to be from the artists themselves that are mm-hmm. part of the series. So it's quite interesting to kind of see that. And you know, we could go on and on about this, but let's kind of put a, a pin in this, and maybe we can do this as a future episode where we can talk more about this. But it's good to have this talk because you know we we haven't really talked about anime. The three of us and what it relates to the industry in a while because we didn't really get to do that with the openings because, well, A, I wasn't on that episode and we weren't able to do that all too much when I was on it for the ending and for our special anime episode on the YouTube. We talked about it a bit, but not too much, but it's it's good that we get to kind of talk about this as a whole with the three of us. I agree. I agree. It'd be, I think this will be a great for future episode. Oh yeah, without anime, I mean, I wouldn't be sitting here today doing the show with you guys, so... I'll, I'll take that away from here, because I had this week's reigns on Music Corner, and I want to give a shout-out to Ken on this, because he's the reason I got into this artist, as he recommended him. So, we're going to talk about the Japanese rapper, Indy, and sometimes he just calls himself IND, and he got his start... As a member of the hip-hop groups, the Otogi Banashi and Creative Drugstore. So, Otogi Banashi formed in 2012 and released their first album that same year. Creative Drugstore would later form in 2013, so he has been a part of both of these. And this was his first experience as he joined the Otogi Banashi in high school, and he worked on two albums with them. In 2017, he actually released a self-produced solo mini-album called D.O.S. And I would love to find that somewhere. Unfortunately, it's not available. In 2019, he launched his solo project, which was his big... uh, And his big first release was the solo mini-album called Indoor. And then he released two works this year which we're definitely going to get into is outdoor and input and it's amazing to see what he's done in such little time so he pretty much has a he's very interesting as this is more of a solo project he's doing and he's a very he's a deep voice and it really reminds me of old school hip-hop in the west and i think that's what drew me to him more than anything because of the beats he has and his rap style. So, and I want to go into that as one of his songs, On My Way, which is the one that really drew me into him. As he teams up with industry veteran Kriva, who is very is a very famous hip-hop artist and has done songs with many people and in solo works. And it really shows the ele- elements of hip-hop and how he incorporates that. And I love the use of the trumpet in there with the mellow beat and just the combination of him and Creven. That is just a nice mixture. I love this one and this made me go, okay, I need more. And his latest track, Weekday, which actually the music video just dropped. Um, the flow in his rap matches so perfectly with the beat and the lyrics. And I also like it because the lyrics are relatable to anyone who listens so for me that's the other thing with uh ind is his lyrics he pretty much relates to everyday life and i really like that about him and that's the way i see him differentiate than western rap is it used to be like that it's not like that now however he definitely has the feel of urban and western rap because of how he does his beats and his rap style And but I like how he incorporates his lyrics into it that are meaningful. Um, The other one I absolutely 
freaking love is determination. And this is one that stuck stuck with me, and it's on Outdoor, his mini album Outdoor from this year. And it just has a heavy beat to it, and he utilizes a more aggressive rap style in it, and it kind of shows like a little bit harder side of him. However, you can feel the determination in this track, and I think that's why it stuck with me, is it just pulled me into this, and I'm like, man, he's really determined about this. And it kind of gave me a little bit of a push, too, is when I was working and helped me push through some of the stuff I was working on. So I just for him, he has so many great tracks. And I'm I'm so glad he did two releases this year because it's it's been great. Currently has two studio albums with the Otogi Banashi, which are Toy Box and Business Factory. He has a self-produced mini album and three solo project mini albums, Indoor, Outdoor and Input. You can find his solo project albums all on Apple Music, and I highly recommend checking them out. They should be available on all other digital platforms as well. And Input is his latest release. Check out his official website and music video weekday on our site, and that way you can read more about him on here as well. But I highly recommend you checking him out. He is one that I'm going to be looking out for, and I hope he keeps up the solo project. But I'm curious about hearing your thoughts, especially because he has a more Western style to him. Indy is, for me, see, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how I want to phrase this. Uh, he's a very interesting and talented artist. I can definitely hear that in his compositions and what he does. I listen to all of his solo EPs, uh, his input EP, his outdoor EP, and his indoor EP and uh, he's cranked out a lot of music in a short time, which I do find very impressive and interesting. The the thing that really gets me with this particular artist is his particular style. It it is that urban westernized rap style, and that that's just not the rap I enjoy listening to. It's not the kind of rap I I particularly like. But I, I'm not going to just throw him out the window because he raps in a style I, I'm not a huge fan of. He does have some pretty solid songs. Uh, I did find his input EP to be fairly enjoyable, all things considered. Uh, I really did like the song Breathe. I felt like that song really worked really well with his particular style. And just the way that that song worked, I, I felt like it suited him very well. But yeah, for me... I, I don't think he's bad or terrible. I'm I'm glad Luna picked him. You know, it gives me a chance to, you know, listen to somebody. And I've been wanting to find a new rapper for a while. It's like, I love Root Alpha. I'm looking for somebody else uh, along his lines and stuff like that. But, and so I'm always eager to listen to and try out new rappers, even if, you know, the rap style is not my thing. I, I, I enjoy trying to find new rappers to listen to. So, you know, he, he was interesting. I can see the appeal. I think he's going to go places. I think he's going to be big. I could see him definitely blowing up big in the West. If he can get exposure in the West, I think he'll be huge. Like I said, his, his style just was not to my liking. So, that's about all I can really say about Indy. Yeah, no, no. I, I, when I first was listening to him, I was like, it's either going to be a really big hit or a really big miss for you. I, I already kind of had that in mind. Not to say, like, like I w was thinking of doing him originally, but then you chose him. <laughs> so I was just like, oh, okay, I'll just let her, let her have this one because he is a fantastic artist that I would like to do highlights on. And yeah, his rap style, I mean, the genre type of rapping that he does, it is very urban style and it isn't for everyone. If you're not really into urban style rapping, if you like that R&B style, you'll be much more turned off by him. What I do like is a lot of his compositions do really fit to what he wants to hit his vocal scheme, so to speak. So that really does work for him. And that's one of the things that really did attract to him. And I think his latest EP input is probably one of his more better works because he decides to go out a little bit more wider and a little not so heavy on the style that he does so much to speak. I mean, there weekday is a really good song, but it, I honestly, a lot of his songs that I can hear, uh, I can hear it from is in like sports and like basketball, I can hear this easily in a 2K20 game. Like I wouldn't mind hearing this in like a Foot Locker, and that that's one of the appeals for him because his style is a very Western style. So 
I, I'm happy you chose him because I do get to talk about him. And he is an artist that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. So, And he's a part of uh, Summit, Summit, which is a very good collaboration of artists that do these fairly Western style and rap and R&B styles, which is really good. I mean, it's good for the for the industry that they try to evolve and because they're taking on a style that is fairly Western inspired. So, you know, I'm, and it, if it weren't for you, I probably wouldn't have gotten into him and I never would have heard of him. And I'm so glad you told me about him and sorry, I took him from you, but he was a great breath of fresh air from what I usually listen to. As you know, I don't usually go for male rappers or vocalists, but his input EP is fantastic. And I agree with you. I could totally see him being played like with basketball. And I think it's just the style of his beats. It would fit perfectly with it. And I'm looking forward to seeing more of what he does because I feel like with each EP he does, it gets better and he's starting to find his flow. Mm. If that makes sense. Because yeah, I thought no. indoor was good, but then I loved outdoor. And then I heard input and I liked input better than outdoor. Yeah. So, so like, th- there's that. And like, there's like a bunch of artists that that kind of do this and I do like what Indy does with it. And he, he's getting better with each release and the, the fact that his releases are getting much more faster with his releases are really good. But I think that's also outdoor and, and input was fairly close. They were like a month away from each other from releases, but yeah. I think that's because of the, the ongoing crisis. I think he had just a lot of free time to make input on, on the side as already out- outdoors. So. Yeah, it makes sense. I was wondering why he got him up so fast because I'm like, artists don't usually get a mini album up this fast. But I like that he he did that because it gave everyone a chance to check out more of his music. Yeah, so there's good things about this artist that I, I would like to see future in the future with. And he has a ways to go and I can't wait to see more about it. Same, same. So yeah, thank you, Luna, for being able to introduce us to her to him. Yeah, thank oh, you, Luna. Thank it was fun you're listening welcome. to him, even if he wasn't the biggest uh, pick. I, I did enjoy it. I know, it's hit or miss, but I'm glad everyone got a chance to check out a new artist. And thank you, Ken, for getting me into him and checking him out, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, with that, let's go on to the Oricon here. And it was predictable from what I've uh, assumed was going to happen with the Yunez Akanshi stuff. But let's uh, let's start off with number 10 here. And number 10 is Lemon, which we haven't seen in a good long time by itself. So it's it's good to see it. And and it was Luna's number one track. So there's not nothing much we can say. You can, if you want to hear our modern day thoughts of Lemon, go listen to our Yunez Akenshi song a podcast that was released earlier in the week. So go right ahead. But yeah, this week it sold a lovely 19,186 points. And then continuing on up to number nine, it is Make You Happy by Need You. So... I found out a reason why this song is very, very popular, and okay. it's I'm, I'm because mildly interested to hear this. Why is this? Song yeah, popular? it's really freaking big in the TikTok, the Japanese TikTok community, because of oh. the dance that they do. That dance they do in the chorus, a lot yes. of freaking people do it. Like a lot of my friends are doing that that dance. It's been a while since I've watched the music video. I'd have to go back and rewatch the dance, but I, I can imagine. I can imagine. I know the uh, USA dance is pretty big on, I think, TikTok too. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was. So. <laughs> I can yeah, see so that. Japan, I can totally Japan see that. Japan loves TikTok, so that, that's one thing. So, uh, yeah, I saw a lot of people doing that around on the beach because of summer and all that stuff. So there, there's one thing for that. So there, that was one of the main reasons why it ended up becoming so popular. And... Yeah, so I, I, I finally understand. <laughs> That's good. Like, That's good. I mean, yeah. I didn't think it was a bad song per se or anything like that. Just, I, it, I mean, was, like I said, it, it, it's the best out of their though. mini album that was released, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, it, it, just, it had weird staying power. I'm like, I, I mean, this isn't a bad song, but why is it still here? But no, yeah. I, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So, Make You Happy sold a lovely 20,918 points. And going on up is... Hadaka no Kokodo by Anyo. Nothing much we can say about that except, you know, she's continuing her trend. And I'm pretty sure that this is probably going to be one of the more popular tracks at the later half of the year, which is evidence with this. So, but 
This week, Haraka no Kokoro sold a lovely 21,013 points. And going on up to number 7, it is Umatoshika, which is good. I mean, we, we talked about it a bunch of times also, and it is in our intro for the Kenshi song, so nothing much we can say there. If you want to hear our thoughts about it, our modern thoughts about it, go listen to last week. <laughs> but this week, it sold a lovely 23,645 points. And number six is Kosui by Eito. Nothing more we can say. He has gained much popularity from these this release the last couple months, so good for him. And this week it sold a lovely 28,062 points. And next on up to number five, it actually dropped one position to Yodani Kakeru by Yao Sobi. Once again, she's done amazing work since the whole stay at home crisis and everything like that has been happening, so good on her. And this week it sold a lovely 31,269 points. And going on up, here's your second chance to talk about Kanden. It is Kanden by Yunizu Kenshi. But uh, if you want to hear our modern day thoughts, <laughs> <laughs> you can probably listen to the podcast, right? <laughs> or, or, or my regret for uh, uh, being so hard on it in the beginning. Yes, uh, yeah, so uh, if you listen to the Kenshi Yunizu podcast specifically, uh, I really go into more detail about this, but just a quick highlight. I was too hard on this song earlier when I first heard it, and I've finally been able to figure out the song and what it's doing, and the song's grown a lot on me. Uh, if you do want to hear more, definitely check out the Kenshi Yonezu. I, I break it down and why the song is actually really, really damn good. Go check that out. But yes, uh, I am glad it's here. You know, I'm the more I hear Condon, the more I come around on that song. Actually, I think if we did this show tomorrow, it might actually be in my top five. You know, that's, that song has grown a lot on me and I, I've grown to have a lot of respect for that song. So go check it out if you haven't. It's it's modern jazz, which what really threw me. I did not know it was a jazz song. And then you listen to it and you're like, oh, this is jazz. This is 188 percent jazz so yeah yeah definitely go check it out i'm glad it's here at number four but yeah this week condensed so they lovely 35,330 and 303 points and going on up to number three it's kite by arashi if you want to hear our initial thoughts of it it's an amazing song it is still number one for me number one this week is a close second a very very close second but kite is still an amazing song in my mind and I don't this know. week, I think I like number oh. one a little bit more. I, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, I mean, I can understand close. the point. It, it's it's close. number one. It's a very, very oh. amazing track. And if I listen probably a handful more times, it probably could take Kite as number one this week. But it, it's, it's as hard. of right now, it, it's hard. Like they're, they're hot. I mean, I mean, we're talking about like two like cream of the crop songs. Like they're both fantastic. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's it's a very close call. But God, number one's oh, I can't wait to get to it. <laughs> yeah. So Kite. Once again, it was only physical copies, and this week it sold a lovely 41,532 copies. And going on up to number two, it is Hello EP by Official Higidandism. So it's very interesting that this was ended up being on the single side compared to a mini album side. So there's that. Um, one thing here, it is a collection of several digitally released songs previously. So there it was Parabola. Parabola. Is, I believe, Parabola. Parabola. Yes, yes. L- and Laughter. And then Hello was released digitally a short while beforehand. And there is a new song, Natsu Yoko Sama no Neko, as number four. And I don't know how to feel about this. This is, goes to the gripes of how I felt about Official Hige overall. I mean, Parabola is the only decent song on this EP, in my humble opinion. And one out of four is still a failing grade. So, I I agree. I I think Parabola or Parabola or, or is the best song on the EP. Hello's okay, but I really didn't like Laughter. And then the last track, I remember it started with Nickel because the cat was by me when I was listening to it, and I told her it's a song about her. <laughs> Natsu. Natsu Yoko Sama no Neko. Yeah. There we go. So, with with that one, it just with Natsu uh, Moyo no Neko, it just felt a, like a ballad that I was I already forgot about, but it disappointed me because I thought it would be so good and a good summer song when I saw the title, and it just. But those and laughter just it fell so hard, and hello was 
middle ground, you know, but like, like Ken said, it really was Padaboda was the best one on there. Parabola. It, it really was. And that one's still memorable to me. And when it was first released digitally, I loved it. And the video was released. I mean, I thought it was fantastic. But then, you know, the rest of them just fell really flat for me. And I'm disappointed because Traveler was so good. And, the, you know, and I Love was fantastic. So it's just a little disappointing. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to repeat what I said three or four episodes back. And I don't mean this to be mean or, you know, to be antagonistic towards the group. But just go away. And just take a break, take a breather. Not, not so much go away, just take a break. <laughs> yeah. My, my point is just get get step away from this for a minute, gather your resources, and because if you just keep cranking and cranking and cranking and you don't have any sort of like creativity or in, you're doing anything new or interesting, you're just going to burn yourself out and you're not really going to create anything memorable or worthwhile. And Hello EP just really just re-emphasizes that. Parabola is the best song. And even I'm not too high on that song, but of the four, it was easily the best. Laughter, the more I hear it, just the more I hate it. I, I think it's way yeah. too long. It's a six minute song and it has no business being. Fourth song's forgettable. And honestly, Hello is equally forgettable. So I, 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 I don't think this, I mean, I'm glad for them. I'm glad they're having success and, you know, I don't want them to stop having success, but, you know, you know, I want to see them, you know, have some th- sense with their tracks compared to yeah. just being a flash in the pan. That, that's the whole thing. Like I, I understand for both me and you, this is this the whole thing is they're being, they're trying to be flash in the pan. They're trying to do what Kenshi did and try to get as much money as possible and then they could yes. try to live off of that. Yeah. But the thing is with that, they're trying to introduce so many different things that it ain't really sticking, and they're rushing to that creativity level. And yeah. It, it doesn't need to be that way. Yeah. I, yeah. And I mean, they might be able to figure this out over years and stuff like that. But you know, are are they going to have years? Or, or you know, are we going to be talking about this group in two or three years? I don't know. I, like, <laughs> like that's the thing is. Uh, that I'm concerned yeah, that, about. That, that's one thing that it'll be very interesting to kind of see their career in about three, two to three years from now. Once once we do the show for our five years, if we get there, hopefully we do. But I, if we do I talk think. about them, it'll be very interesting to kind of see what the style is then, and if they're still trying to catch up to what what Pretenders is. It's gonna be sad at this point. They're gonna be a one hit wonder, which like. It's sad. It's it's really sad to see a yeah a band that is they're honestly they're all around they're really good, just hit that creative slump. Yeah, and and to uh, an, another point that kind of goes into our favor uh, as I think we might be seeing burnout by the populace because I mean as popular as official Hige Dondism is this hit number two. Now I, I'll admit they had some tough competition this week. But even so, like, like they should have been number one. There's no reason that they shouldn't have been or at least been a little bit more competitive in that number two slot. Uh, no, but... I, I wouldn't have gotten them to number one. <laughs> to, to, I don't to to number one to what it is. I don't I don't bet against this particular group, not not, well, not no, so much fair. the group, but just the industry that they're a part of. I, still, I think they could have done better. I think this is a little bit on their low side, uh, and we'll see. We'll see how much staying power this has. How many weeks this is on the chart? Uh, I don't think. I think it'll be on for another week or two, if that, and it'll be gone. I don't. I don't see this having much much staying power. I think Pretender will appear once more again compared to this. Yeah, I, I think we'll see Pretender again in the future, or I love, especially when it gets near the end of the year and it gets to Kohaku time. I I think we'll see. Uh, I think we'll see I love pop up again. Uh, I because I, it's going to be a very big song by the end of the year. But yeah, I, I don't think this 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 EP is going anywhere. Uh, if I think if you're a fan of Official and you really like all their last stuff, I think I think this will be just fine. It'll be right in their wheelhouse. But uh, if you're like us and you're just like, well, 
you know, I just, I really wish they would do something just a little different or do something that's a little, just a little bit out there, uh, you know, that, that takes us a little bit more risk. I, I think we would be feeling different, but you know, this, this, yeah. this is, same style you know uh again i hate to make this comparison but you know it's kind of like nickelback where they kind of have like the formula and then they stick within the formula and that's not good because your songs wind up sounding the same you know this is coming from the guy that likes groups where their songs sound alike so you know you, you gotta you gotta mix it up a little bit you got you gotta just get in there do something different i mean i'd love to see them do like a power ballad or something i know they got the talent i know they could do it uh, just you know, see them doing something that's a little different than this. I think I think Hello EP is just a flop. I'm glad it's number two. I'm glad people are enjoying it. I'm glad it has its audience. But for me, it's just it's just not that good. It is what it is, and we we've all three of us kind of harped on this at one point or another about official and yeah, I I I don't know how to approach this as of right now. We'll see if it continues on after this, but if not and it kind of confirms our theories but well with that hello ep sold a wonderful eighty two thousand five hundred and twenty five points and going on up to number one it is run by sexy zone and by god yeah like i said number number one and number three can switch on a dime because of how great number one was and I would run to a store and buy this if I lived in Japan. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, for me, I, I am always critical of Johnny's and the Junior specifically, but because Sexy Zone is in that intermit zone of when they tried to experiment of what what Johnny's was going to be, I've always liked a lot of Sexy Zone's tracks. But Run is probably their best song that I've heard from them. It is freaking amazing, and I've. I've listened to it at least 20 times already over the course of the last two or three days. Oh, I completely agree. Run is amazing. And I know sometimes I'm iffy on Sexy Zone, but the first listen, I immediately said to myself, man, I wish this was available digitally and I'm so tempted to buy it. If there's there's another thing I want to buy on CD Japan, I might add this to my order because it's that good. I mean... I cannot say enough about how fantastic this was and can Sexy Zone please do more stuff like this because this is like too good. Oh, oh my lord. This this song is easily, in, in my humble opinion, it's the song of the week. It was fantastic. I, I really wasn't expecting a whole... I mean, Sexy Zone, I, I mean, I, I've liked their songs in the past. They've been kind of hit and miss with me, but they really have never left like a big, big impression on me. So I wasn't expecting too much when I booted this song up, but my God, is it good. It just hits all the right notes. It's this fun song. It's got a good melody to it. The guy's harmonization is just completely on point. I mean, you just hear this amazing, fantastic number and it just makes you want to run out and buy it. It really does. It just like makes you want to go out and oh my lord, I, this is was just the treat of the week. And yeah, I'm with I'm with Luna. I'm I'm like I am this close to picking it up. I've never bought Johnny's anything, but I am this close to grabbing it from CD Japan because it was it, it's just phenomenal. It, it is yeah. Oh my god. It's it's so amazing. The chorus is just what kills it for me. Honestly, it's one of the better things I've heard in a long time. Now that chorus and, is is the hook right there. That is the hook. It's so good. And you you get people that comment saying that you know I'm not a Johnny's fan, but this song is amazing. And I was I I, I mean I'm a Johnny's person, but Six is almost. They're not my cup of tea at certain times, so I wasn't sure what to listen to. But Run just will... It makes me anticipate what their next single is going to be, if they're going to continue this style or not. If they are, then more to them. They already they know what they got, and they're, they're getting back that additional member, so who knows what's going to happen there. Oh, I agree. Like, I want to hear more like this from them. I mean, this is so good. And like you said, Ken, it's the chorus. And I I just cannot say enough about how much I love this song. 
And I don't buy much Johnny's. It's mainly Adashi, but I'm about ready to hit order on this because it's that good. I mean, if they could do more, more like this, I cannot say enough. This is my song of the week right here. Yeah, yeah. I, the the I do wish it was digital because if it was digital, there's a really really high probability this would be in my top five for the end of the year. But because it's not digital, and I have to go out of my way to listen to it, you know, probably fade in the background. And I won't and I won't I won't remember it for the end of the year. But you know, that that's just a problem with uh, technology, I guess. Uh, but this song is fantastic. The song is absolutely amazing. Man, it, it's, it is in my top five right now of the year. Just like, period. Like, this song is just really, really good. I think there's like only like two or three songs that I like this is a little better than this. Fantastic song. Like, absolutely wonderful song. Yeah, and they, they killed it on the single side, too, all things considered. As for physical copies, it sold 245,514 copies. And if that seems a little low to you guys... It's because the number one on the album side wiped the floor of everything else. And that shouldn't be a surprise to anyone that what it was. And when, let's kind of look at the the albums real fast here. We got the at number 10, Idol Master, Master Artist 4, number 2. It's mostly the character songs for this particular art character for idol master you got bootleg which we haven't seen in a while by yuneza kenji at number nine we got make you happy by need you we got live live by ak69 which is good because ak69 is a phenomenal artist mm -hmm. so we we also got number at number six special thanks by toyama toyama now who is a very successful seiyu and she is very very successful she's probably highly up there in my personal list of of seiyus you got Traveler by Official Hige increasing to number five, which is kind of ironic there. Then you got number f number four, Map of the Soul 7, Journey by BTS. It's slowly but surely going down there. And then you got Tosaku by Yodoshika at number three, kind of bumped down from last week. But at number one, obviously, it is going to be the lovely Yonezu Kenshi with Stray Sheep at a bombastic 1.015 million just total. can i say good for him like this is beyond i mean we knew he was gonna hit the top but that that is just killed everything we've seen i feel like so far this year especially this is an album and i mean i will say there were several editions including the amazon exclusives and probably other retailer exclusives and you think about how many of those sold because I bought the version with the art book. Oh. I just pulled the trigger and bought it this week. You're talking about sixty or so bucks. Yeah, it's like sixty for one copy. Yeah, the and the bulk of these numbers are physical. It's over nine hundred thousand physical copies. So like the vast majority of of this number is physical, which is just crazy. or almost. It was like eight hundred and seventy nine thousand were physical. Yeah, yeah, so, something like that. It's like eight hundred eighty or something like that. But it's it's phenomenal nonetheless because you think about this. This is forty dollars at minimum. So yep. The industry kind of just shot itself in the arm just from this release alone. This and last week with Odyssey with Kite. So the kite was like what nine hundred thousand, if I remember correctly. Like it was pushing a million. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, with, with the last two releases alone already made close to a million to two million yep sony so that's and, good for the industry sony and johnny's sony and, happy and john johnny's sony and johnny is happy i'm pretty sure sony is hella happy that's why they're pushing all these promotional items all over across japan because they know what they got oh yeah mm -hmm. obvious obviously he's already already sealed artists of the year and probably album of the year just by this release alone oh unless, we haven't seen unless, an album even get remotely close to these numbers yet yeah, unless Odyssey brings out another thing out of nowhere, but I don't think they are going to make an album this year. I think they're not. No. I think if if they do, they'll, it'll be literally at the end of the year, and that might be a dark horse, but I think Kenshi got this for artists and album of the year at this point for sales-wise. Yeah, I agree. And, but yeah, I mean, it's good that we got to talk about the things we talked about. It's it's very interesting, and I'm happy that we did the Kenshi podcast before we got the numbers, because it was very good for us, and our sake, anyway. But, 
yeah, I want to say thank you for listening to this week's episode. You can check out all of us at all the social media stuff. You can check out the the podcast at Twitter and Instagram at ongakadu. You can check out the website at ongakadu.com. Make sure you check out our YouTube channel where we have several of our episodes on YouTube form and including exclusive anime episodes. So go check that out. Go check that out. You can also check out our affiliates. Karyu Hunter, he is a Twitch streamer who just loves Donkey Kong for some whatever reason. Love hate relationship with that. You can check him out at twitch.tv slash Karyu Hunter. K Y O R Y U H U N T E R. You can also check out our other affiliate, Timber Taff, who is a Twitch streamer in his own right. He is currently going through Zelda Ram. Ram randomizer i think he's about almost done with that and i think he's going to move on to paper mario we were talking about that earlier in the week and you can check out at twitch.tv slash timber tab t-i-m-b-r-t-a-f-t you can also check out your sister rose who is going through monster hunter i saw her going through monster hunter a couple times and you can check her out at twitch.tv slash rainstar kitty r-a-i-n-s-t a R K I T T Y. You can also lastly check out our affiliate. Fangirl has no name. She is a variety Twitch streamer who does so many games and is very heavily embedded with the Zelda community. You can check her out at twitch.tv slash fangirl has no name. F A N H A S N O N A M E. And you can check out the podcast that I do with Fangirl, Kyo, and Timber called Potasaurus. This week it was just me and Timber and the hilarity that goes along with that. So you can check out everything for that podcast. Just look up Koryu Hunter, same as his Switch handle on all podcast streaming services. You should find it. And yeah, uh, you can find me at Twitter at OTYKen1 where I talk about Bang Dream, Aina Aiba, video games, Bang Dream, Seiyu's Bang Dream, visual novels. And did I say Bang Dream? Yeah, Bang Dream. And you can also check out Renford at Renford D. And where can we find you, Luna? You can find me on Twitter, my anime list, Anime Planet at Luna Maria87. And you can find me on Instagram at Nerdy Collector Luna. If I do tweet, I tweet about horror related movies and stuff, anime, and J pop. And you can see pictures on my Insta. And you, Greg, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at Ongaku Gray, where I tweet about, you know, what I'm watching, what I'm playing, what I'm listening to, all that fun jazz. I tweeted out my thoughts of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Uh, I know I'm behind on that game, but uh, I, I've i always been tepid to pick it up. I, I like older Zelda titles, and a lot of the, the newer ones have never been to my fancy. And I'm, let's just say I was really glad I borrowed the game instead of spending money on it. Uh, so if you want my thoughts and opinions on it, you can definitely check out my Twitter feed where I go into much more detail. But yeah, once again, I want to say thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Ungakadu. I'm your host, Ken, saying thank you very much and have a great day. Aloha. This is Luna saying thank you very much for listening to this week's episode. Hope you enjoyed. And we will catch you next time. Ja matane. And this is great. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and we'll see you guys right back here next week. Bye bye. <laughs>